Hello, my gorgeous ones. This is Dr. V. Welcome to a pick a card reading. We haven't done one of these in a while, so I thought it would be fun to do it with my little owls because I love owls, actually, you know. <laughs> I've read all of the Harry Potter books and I love them all so much. And I was just telling my sons the other day that the one thing that I would want the most from Harry Potter is my own Hedwig, my own owl. Hedwig was Harry Potter's owl and I just absolutely loved her. So I thought it would be really nice for us to do this pick a card with the owl as our spirit guide because they are so wise and to help you choose which, which pile that you feel most guided to. Because the question that we are asking spirit today is what is he dying to tell you? What would he tell you if he could, right? The he would tell you this. And what would that be? What would he want to tell you? He or she, your divine masculine, your divine feminine, your twin flame or soulmate. Labels really don't matter. All that matters is how you feel in your heart about this special person that you're watching this reading for. So for those of you who are new subscribers, I want to give you a big warm welcome. My name is Dr. V and it is my absolute passion and pleasure to be here to bring you messages from spirit, um, to help you to gain clarity and confidence and empowerment as you move forward on this incredible journey that you're on to love and union with that special person, whether you're you've been in separation or whether you've been struggling with little to no contact or whether you just want to understand and communicate better with the person that you're already with. For all those reasons, these messages are really going to help you to step into that beautiful, expanded version of yourself, that greatness that you know that is within you. And from that point, you're going to attract more and more love love, abundance, and thriving into your life in every possible way. That is my guarantee from spirit to you. I feel it. I have faith. That is why we are here. So make sure that you click on that subscribe button and join this incredible family. All of you who are already part of the Live Tarot family, you know how much I love and appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being so loving and supportive to one another as well as to me. So let's go ahead and take a moment here. If you would like to um, close your eyes, take a deep breath and see which of these piles you feel most attracted to. Which of these owls do you feel has that special message for you and your beloved. Now you could pick aisle number, pile number one, two, or three. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can have all of the messages and take the ones that resonate for you. There is no right or wrong answer here, so be gentle with yourself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with owl number one. Okay, my lovelies who chose pile number one, owl number one, just wanted to remind you that the timestamps for all of the readings are in the description box below. And make sure you leave me a comment. Let me know which reading you chose and how you felt about it. All right, so let's see for this beautiful group number one, what would your twin flame soulmate or beloved want to tell you? What are they dying to tell you about how they feel, what they're thinking about this connection? What do they really want you to know? All right, so let me take a look here because I am seeing these at the exact same time that you are. So Let's see, what we have here is the Four of Cups, the Six of Swords, the King of Wands, along with the Action and Control cards, along with, wow, alone. <laughs> 
So there are some very interesting things here that I feel that your um, twin flame or soulmate may not have been communicating to you. I'm feeling that there are certain things that have gone on with your person here. Um, that they have definitely been hiding. There have been some emotional issues that they've been going through. And I feel like this is somebody who is kind of used to dealing with things on their own. Okay, they have. it's almost like they have been on their own for a very long time. I don't know if um, this, again, this may resonate, resonate for some of you, but not for all of you. I feel like you're, you're the person that you are in love with they have always felt that um, no one really has their back. Um, they've always felt that they've always had to fend for themselves, even though they may have had a family growing up or whatever it is, whatever those dynamics were, they never felt fully supported. And I'm not saying that they had a evil family or a bad family, but they just in their heart didn't feel like they had the support of the people around them. And so there was always some part of them that felt very alone and abandoned. They always felt like they are the only ones who had to look out for themselves. Um, your beloved may have even left home at an earlier age because of this, right? They may have... Um, kind of left for school or left for college or maybe even just left home at the age of 18 and moved out and like gotten a job and really kind of you know lifted themselves up off off their own bootstraps like they they may have really struggled in their early life because they didn't have that support and they just kind of had to go out there earn a living and do it all themselves and so what that has created in them is that it has um really made them very strong in many ways, right? Because it's like under any circumstance, under any situation, your person can really take care of themselves. They're used to just toughing it out on their own. But along with that strength also comes a deep sense of loneliness that they also feel. And that's why we're getting this particular image here is that inside even though they have a very strong exterior even though they they kind of love the fact that they've proven themselves in life like they you know didn't let those circumstances let them down or get them down but beneath the surface of that there is a deep sense of loneliness and a bit of that inner child still there that abandoned child that felt that they were not supported and so the result of that you know has been definitely a double edged sword for or your beloved because on the one hand they are very action oriented they're very good at taking action but they've done this out of necessity like they've done they the actions that they have taken they it's you know it's like they want you to know that yes they are capable of massive action and the actions that they have always taken has been very in that grounded kind of pentacles energy right they have always been more grounded in the realities of life because that was their struggle, right? That is what they had always had to deal with. And so over time, this has weighed them down. This has kind of grinded them down into feeling some form of exhaustion because I feel that because of the situation that they came from, because of their background and all the constant work and action that they always had to take in order to take care of themselves, they became used to controlling things or part of the the result of that situation that uh, experience that they come from has made them somebody who is not just action oriented but is also control oriented they have this deep need to control their environment why because the environment that they grew up in never felt like it had any boundaries or control in it so they always felt very out of control in that environment so when they went out on their own and they decided that, hey, you know, since no one has my back anyway, I'm going to have my own back. I'm going to be my own best friend. 
then they decided that they needed to do things and they needed to keep things under their own control. But again, there are always consequences to all of these things, right? These things are always double-edged swords because what happens is that because of that, they, they have become a bit stagnant. See what this card says? Stagnation, delusion, release the need to control situations. And so when you first met, you may have noticed this about your person. Um, you may have fallen like really crazy in love with them because they had that very strong energy. They had that very, you know what, I can take care of this. I can take care of you. Like when you were around them, when you experienced their love, their friendship, their, their, the interaction that you had together, they always make you feel like when they're around, things will be okay. Even if shit hits the fan, because they're here, it's all going to work out. They, they have that sense of character, right? They have that sense of um, uh, giving you that vibration of somebody who can handle anything. And that is a really great vibration to have. It's a very attractive, it can be a very sexy vibration as well, right? We love this in people, you know? And it's not just a masculine thing. It's a feminine thing. Like my, you know, this reminds me very much of my aunt. Um, she is ever since I was young, this is the kind of person that she is. Like she just, when she's around, you just know it doesn't matter. The world could end and she will make it all right. <laughs> she will make it somehow livable. Like she will make it somehow like, like, you know what? The world is ending, but since she's here, things are going to be just fine. That's how you'll feel. And that is what attracted my uncle to her, right? That is why he married her. And I feel that this is a very powerful quality that your person also has. And so because of this, again, being a bit of a double-edged sword, this your person wants you to know that because of the way that they were raised, because of these experiences that have made them who they are, one of the things that has been difficult for them is to achieve some sort of harmony, okay? So this is something that they really, really feel with you or at some point point have felt with you. And this is one of the reasons why they fell in love with you because you brought some, some deep sense of peace and harmony that your person has been seeking for a long time that your love has wanted so much, but has always eluded them that has never been there for them because see power, self-confidence and productivity. So see, these are the three things that your love is excellent at. They're excellent at power, action, control. They're, they're very self-confident it because they know they can, you know, they can make shit happen. They know they can get things done and they're incredibly productive because they had to be their entire life. But what's interesting is that I feel that these three things are wonderful aspects of them, but they have not given them that sense of peace and harmony. And I do feel that 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 is why they fell in love with you because in you, in the connection that they felt with you, they felt that peace and harmony that they had never felt before or that they'd always longed to feel because see, I feel your presence every day. This is what they would want you to know. See, I feel like part of the reason why they have become addicted to you in a really good sense, in the sense that they really, really love you and they love being around you is because they feel your presence every day. They want to feel that presence. They want to feel your harmonious presence, your love, your nurturing, your caring, that sense of peace that you exude to them. And I'm not even saying that you're a peaceful person. <laughs> you, you yourself may not think that you are the most peaceful or calm person in the world, but that is not the same way. Like the way we perceive ourselves is often very different than the way other people pick up on our vibration. So even if you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't think I'm the most peaceful, peaceful person. I know I get mad. I mean, I know I get frustrated. I know I can be a bit impatient, you know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you may not see yourself that way, but your person in comparison to what they are, what they've seen, you bring a lot of peace and calmness. So I'm also feeling though that this connection has, um, you know, 
opened up parts of your person that they almost didn't even know existed anymore or that they had kept under lock and key for so long that it was very difficult for them to open up to you. And so that has been another issue where it's like you you can feel their love, you can feel their goodness, but you haven't you haven't necessarily heard it from them verbally as yet. Like they may act like they love you. They may do things for you. They may be amazing towards you, but you may be still be waiting for them to say, I love you. I want you. I want to be with you forever. That is something that they may have been holding back at this time because of this four of cups energy, which is really the energy of holding yourself back, not wanting to make a decision, not being able to move forward because see, you're also getting this message of them wanting, wanting to tell you I wasn't honest with you about my feelings at the time so I'm feeling though that this is this is a really good actually um, shift that we're getting into with these last two cards for you which is the six of swords and the king of wands this is fantastic okay you beautiful beautiful people watching this this is fantastic because now we are seeing a transition okay we're seeing a transition for your person from this, I wasn't honest. I, you know, you know, I, I feel so much for you, but I haven't been able to verbalize it. I've been holding myself back. I haven't been able to make this decision because, you know, I'm just so used to being on my own. I'm like this lone wolf, you know, nobody's ever really cared about me. I don't really trust anybody. Like, you know, I've never felt truly loved. And so I've kind of just held back for such a long time that I've gotten used to it. But now look at the beautiful energy here. Six of swords they want to put that behind them okay they want to put behind them all of that pain and struggle all of the conditioning that they have put themselves through right to be where they are now it's time for them to put it behind they that is what they want you to know they want to come forward and take massive action towards you with their heart king of wands okay they are passionate about you they're excited about you they want to come forward they want to take real action towards this connection because we're seeing it here again right this king of wands with this action card they're ready Okay, so this is what they are dying to tell you. They are ready to take the next step. So don't be surprised if you hear from them and they sit you down in some way and say, look, there are things that I really need to talk to you about. There are things that I really need to say to you because they are really passionate and excited to do so. Oh, I love this. Mm -mm -mm. So guys, please let me know what you thought of this reading. Leave me a comment if you would like to have a personal reading with me, um, because of course these are general readings. I want you to just take what resonates for you and leave the rest. But if you'd like to know what's going on in your specific situation, the link to a private reading with me is in the box below, as well as the link to all of these Oracle decks that I've created, especially for all of you who are on this journey. You guys are so precious. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you all on the next reading. Hello, my gorgeous ones who chose owl number two. Welcome to your reading. As always, the timestamps are in the description box below. Make sure you leave me a comment. Tell me what you thought of this reading. Now let's see what your twin flame soulmate or beloved would like to tell you. What are they dying to let you know what do they want you to know that they haven't maybe been able to say so far wow hmm what are they oh wow oh wow <laughs> what is your beloved your person dying to tell you what do they really need for you to know at this time wow Ooh. I'm getting goosebumps here. I'm getting goosebumps. Oh, all right. So let me take a look at these cards. Let me feel what spirit is saying here because it's the first time I'm seeing them as well. Wow. Okay, guys, we have some pentacles energy coming through really strong. Ooh, mm, I'm loving this. I am loving this. All right. So what I'm feeling here in terms of the overall energy of what is going on with your person is this, look at this, attachment, okay? Letting go, restriction, and fear. So what I'm feeling here is that if you have been struggling in this connection together, 
if you have been in some form of separation or struggle, it doesn't have to be long separation. It could be long. It could be short. It could just be miscommunication. It could be, you know, you're just not um, on the same wavelength right now. Whatever the situation is, there has definitely been some sort of um, time that your person has taken to kind of get back into an equilibrium for them to just get back get themselves back into a really good place because what I'm feeling here is that one of the reasons why this has happened and what they want you to know but may not even have had the guts to actually sit down and tell you is that your twin flame soulmate or beloved they have issues with attachment okay they have issues and fears that are surrounding the idea of being attached to somebody so i'm feeling that they have come from some sort of multiple experiences of disappointment okay so i'm feeling that they may have had some major relationships in their past where they were either betrayed, cheated upon, or just treated really badly. It could be any of those or all of those things. And I'm not sure for some of you, they may have told you this already. They may have shared these experiences with you. But for some of you, I feel like they haven't even really been able to share those experiences with you yet. You may have had hints of them, like you may know that certain things have happened, but they may not have really gone into detail with you. They may not have truly opened up those memories for you because I do feel that there is a lingering pain from those memories and I don't feel that it's coming from an attachment to those people because see this attachment is a big thing for your for your person I don't feel that they are still attached to those people I feel that what they are attached to or what they're having a hard time letting go is how those people made them feel and that is where the resistance and the fear and the restrictions are coming for your love. As in, they are holding or have been holding themselves back from connecting with you at the deepest level, from committing to you, from telling you how they truly feel, from anywhere from telling you how they truly feel. And even if they already have, they still have fallen short in terms of actually making an offer or a commitment of some sort of union, marriage, or if you don't want marriage, but just some sort of a real offer. Like you are one another's one and only, you are a couple, you are partners, right? So that is why because of whatever they're attached to in terms of the way those people or those relationships made them feel, they may have stepped back for a while because we're getting a shadow message from them. See, I found safety in the silence between us. Okay, so for some of you, there may be some form of separation here. There may have been some form of silence here going on, like you may be waiting for them to come forward. You may be feeling like, look, I'm not desperate. You know, I don't need to chase them. I don't need to be available all the time. You may have been giving them, them some space because I think they needed this. I think at some level, you saw through them. Like you saw that they are very like burnt. Like they've been burned so much in the past that they are really hesitating to, to commit to you, even though what I feel very much deep down inside is that it's like, it's incredible. The connection that the two of you have is truly incredible. 10 of pentacles. I mean, this is the best possible card you could ever get, especially because it is deeply tied to marriage. So this is why I feel that in you, in your situation, the issue here is not at all the emotions, okay? There is no um, question here that the two of you deeply, deeply love one another, okay? There is no question about that. The question here is 
what is truly obstructing your love from taking this relationship to the next level? What is truly getting in their way? Because look at this, we, both of you feel this way. And I feel like, again, have they told you this? Because I feel like for some of you, it's like they have tried to hint at this, but they may not have come out and verbally told you. They may have been wanting you to understand their feelings just from the actions that they have taken because it is too scary. They're too afraid of being attached to you. I feel that this connection, this romance that they have with you has brought out this deep kind of guttural desire that they have to be committed but to be committed to the right person. And I feel like they have tried this before and they have figured out that this was the wrong person to commit to, whether it was just a relationship or whether it was a marriage. I feel like for some of you, um, your person may have been married before or they are divorced or they are you know, kind of in the process of divorce or, or they're going through some sort of, um, they have gone through endings that were very, very difficult and very painful. And they may have even had um, ex, exes, girlfriends, boyfriends, spouses who were really toxic and bad and that made it all the more worse and that is why they fear the, att the attachment, right? So when they met you, it's like, they were like, oh yeah, <laughs> I have never met somebody like this before. When they met you, they literally had visions of this Ten of Pentacles as in they could see themselves building a family with you. They could see themselves sharing a home. Um, they could see themselves standing in front of their family and their friends and making vows of marriage and commitment to you. And I think that really shared, scared the shit out of them. <laughs> and like It terrified them. Okay, They found this terrifying. Instead of finding it exciting as many people would, <laughs> your person, and I don't blame them, it's because, right, it's because of, of you know, their past experiences, it actually drove them into a tizzy of terror. <laughs> tizzy of terror, because that is like the exact, thank you, spirit. Wow. They're giving me like so phrases that I would never actually use in life. I've never used that phrase tizzy of terror before, but I don't know why this is what your person is feeling and it's coming through very strong. So it's like they love romancing you. Okay. They love it. They love romancing you. They love whining with you, dining with you, hanging out with you. You know, they love doing everything with you. And the more they spent time doing those things with you, look at this, revel, flow, savor, entice, open yourself to romance. The more they let themselves open themselves to this romance, the more they flew with it. Like the more it flowed for them, the more they reveled in it, the more they, I mean, it was so enticing. It was intoxicating. It gave them visions of grandeur like in the best way as in wow this is it right I am I want this so badly so I feel like again the question here is not at all what the feelings are the question is that your person is totally terrified of of the stakes they feel that the stakes here are so high they almost feel and this is a really strong energy coming through it's like they almost feel like if they were to commit to you, if they were to marry you, make you an offer of marriage, and somehow it did not work out, I feel like it would be so devastating for them that they would almost feel like there's no reason to even live anymore. And I'm not saying they're suicidal. They're not. They're, this is not about being suicidal. This is about like this meaning of life, like, you know, loving somebody so much and wanting it to work out so much that you are afraid that what if something goes wrong? It's because if something goes wrong, like I won't even feel like living anymore because it'll be that devastating. So that is why what they have chosen to do is to just kind of be more spontaneous with you, to take things one day at a time because they felt so much of this energy of wanting to commit. Um, and I'm not saying that it comes from any pressure from you. It's like pressure from themselves. It's their own desire. And so they decided, okay, you know what? I am just going to, you know, focus on the romance, focus on feeling good, enjoying my time and just being spontaneous, taking things slow, taking things one day at a time, not, you know, making big plants 
sorry, making, <laughs> sorry, making, I don't know why I can't hold on to cards today, making big plans, right? This is something that they just like, they wanted to do, but they were too fearful of. So they decided to stay in the spontaneity. Um, they also, I feel with these last two messages, I also feel that um, you are there, you know, you are the yin to their yang. So this two of pentacles, many people see as the twin flame card. So that is up to you if you would like to interpret it that way. They also see you as their true life partner, but they also see because of this 10 of pentacles energy, which is so beautiful, this combination of wanting to build a real life with you, something real, something concrete, not just fantasy, but they also feel that both of you have a lot on your plate. So you may be juggling a lot as well. And that's only adding to kind of the pressure of everything. So, and I also feel for some of you who have been married before, there may be kids involved in this situation, okay? Where um, there is a juggling of kids either for them or for you or for both of you. So this is also adding kind of more pressure to the situation. But this is the good thing that we're going to end with here, which I absolutely love, is that they want to, they truly want to move forward from these feelings of fear of attachment because this eight of cups is literally the energy of them wanting to move on they want to put these fears behind them they want to put the ghosts of the past behind them they want to leave those ghosts in the past because they're realizing now that if they continue to resist this if they continue to say, oh, well, no, you know, I'm too afraid of attachment, too afraid of marriage and commitment. I'm too afraid of all of this. What if it, it, it doesn't work out? They've realized that this restriction, this um, letting themselves be restricted in this way is only going to keep them away from this vision, from this beautiful future that they could have with you. So they are ready to walk away from not from you, but from all of those situations and people in the past that have been haunting them. I love it. Eight of cups. They are going to put all that crap, that crap behind them. Look at this. They are turning their back on the past and they are moving forward to a brighter future. And it's all about opening up their heart and their emotions to lead a brand new life here, to create a new life with you. I love it, love it, love it. So please do leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of your reading. Of course, take the messages as they resonate and leave the rest. If you would like specific guidance on your unique situation, that's what a private reading would be for. And the link to that is in the box below, as well as the link to all of these Oracle decks that I've created, especially for all of you who are on this journey. So you know how much I love you. You know how much I believe in you. And I'll see you guys all on the next reading. Hello, my gorgeous ones who chose owl number three. Welcome to your reading. As always, timestamps are in the box below. And make sure that you leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of your reading. So let's see what your twin flame, your soulmate, your beloved would like to say to you. What would they tell you from their deepest heart? What are they dying for you to know that they may not have been able to share with you until now? Mm. Give me a moment here. I'm seeing these cards for the first time, just like you. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow, we have two queens here. Very interesting. All right, so what I'm feeling here is that your person has definitely been in an energy of real... Um, staticness like as in they've been really really stuck they have been kind of stuck in the mud and they I'm yeah I don't, don't want to say anything bad about them but I feel like it's really of their own doing here this is something that is through their own choices okay so I'm getting 
an energy from your person that they tend to be in their head a lot okay they tend to be very much um somebody who lives a lot in the realm of their mind and has a bit of a harder time um getting out of their mind and opening up their heart space that is their first issue um that is something that they really want you to know you may have already even noticed this about them right but Maybe you've had that conversation, maybe you haven't, but I feel that one of the things that may have attracted you to them in the beginning that made you feel um, really excited about them is because I feel that your person is extremely smart, extremely sharp. I feel that when you first met, um, you had this instant attraction and this instant really incredible energy as in you had amazing conversations like conversations that went on for hours and you were like oh my gosh I could talk to you forever um you know the conversation just never ends like you know how sometimes certain people you meet you think they're absolutely amazing sometimes they're just absolutely gorgeous they, they're this they're that they're like everything but after like an hour like the conversation is dead because you're like you don't know what else to say right <laughs> like, and that's when you know that you may find them attractive physically but there may not be enough of that intellectual emotional and mind connection where you are very um very stimulated by each other's personalities by each other's um, ways of thinking and being and so I feel like that was not the case here that this was quite the opposite when you first met and and um connected you guys were just like wow like i i wish i could talk to this person forever they are endlessly fascinating you both thought this of each other you thought they were endlessly fascinating and they thought you were endlessly fascinating so you started out kind of like with the meeting of the minds right you had so much in common um you talked about so many different things you connected at many different levels and so you felt that things were on the right track and they were but then something something happened here where your person i feel like they were very enthusiastic about you and then at some point they just became very stuck and withdrawn they may have become really silent they may have gone from being like ch somebody who's like really really chatty they may have been texting you all the time calling you all the time meeting up with you you know any of those above right uh, any of the above they may have been doing all those things and then they may have just boom gone silent like really really like all of that lot of contact went down into like less contact and you didn't understand why and i'm also feeling as if they didn't explain it either or they haven't yet but i feel like you know at some level why but you're not sure because the communication may or may not have been there because see we're getting the moonlight goddess here repressed emotions healing and reflection so i feel that one of the um downsides of your person's um you know intellect right the fact that they're really exciting very interesting have a lot to say you know may you know are very sharp and 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 smart i feel that one of the downsides of that is that they kind of use that as a facade to um cover up emotions that they are repressing because i'm feeling from your person that they're not quite ready yet in their life <coughs> i'm sorry my throat <coughs> i'm gonna pause here and just get some water one second Thanks so much for your patience, guys, with my throat. All right, so getting back to what we were saying. So, see, this is the thing. It's like they have realized that they are coming to a crossroads in terms of where they need to make choices because, because they have repressed a lot of that emotional side of themselves in favor of that intellect in favor of that personality right it's almost become their comfort zone right their intellect their intelligence how smart and fascinating they are that has become a really big comfort zone for your person and there's nothing wrong with that but the thing is is that in their connection to you 
they kind of relied more upon that than upon really opening up their heart space. Um, and so you may have felt that they um, care for you, that there's an intense connection, there's a lot of love, but yet there was always some some sort of place where it ends. You know, it's almost like where you hit a wall and now you're like hitting your head against the wall because you can only get to a certain point with this person. And after that, they tend to shut down. They tend to not be able to take ownership of where they are in their heart space. And so that is why we're getting this repressed emotion. So definitely your love needs to work on why like they they want you to know that they understand that they repress their emotions they understand that they have a hard time taking ownership of their heart as in being able to express um, how they truly feel in words and in actions. They want you to know that, yes, they understand that you can only get to a certain point with them after which it does become a sort of hitting your head on the wall. So they want you to know that they understand all of this, but they have a hard time really confessing, like fessing up to their true feelings, taking ownership for what is going on in their heart. Because see, it's like they know this and they're trying to work on it but they really are at a crossroads where they need to make that final decision because see one of their messages to you is don't lose hope for us we can work it out so it's like they don't want you to give up on them so that's another thing that they are dying to tell you um, another thing that they really want you to know is that yes they've kind of been pig-headed <laughs> you know they've been stubborn they've been very kind of you know more into their intellect and their mind and their activities and you know they've been you know really been very stubborn about letting their guard down but they want you to know that they want to work it out they don't want this connection to end they want to be able to make this decision like this the decision that they want to make is to come forward is to come towards you to not be in this stuck mode okay to, they 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 are starting to feel the same way that you are right that that level that depth of connection that they want to experience with you they're repressing like they're not letting themselves do it because of their fears because of whatever it is that is outside of their comfort zone that they're not willing to explore, right? And so that is why they want to work it out. They don't want you to lose hope in them. They don't want to be stuck anymore because it's it, now the discomfort of being stuck in not being able to be closer to you, not being able to commit to you is becoming more uncomfortable than the comfort zone that they're used to. Like it's becoming more uncomfortable to be uncomfortable to be away from you or to not be really deep connected to you and be intimate with you than to um, open up their heart right so now they're starting to kind of hit that rock bottom that they need to hit in order to appreciate what they have in their life because see the other thing that they want to say to you is everywhere I go I look around as if you will magically be there Okay, so they are definitely very connected to you. They're definitely very, very attracted to you, um, wanting to be near you, wanting to be in your presence. You know, they may have stepped back or you may have stepped back and that is why they are missing you as well. So there is some sort of energy here of really being missed um, that is coming across. You may be missing each other, mirroring, mirroring each other in that way, but they are truly looking for your presence. They truly want you to know not to lose hope. They want you to be open to working it out with them because see this wheel of fortune is a very positive card but i do want to give a message because i feel like there is a special message coming through here that may not be for everybody but for some of you there is some sort of a third party situation here involved as well and that is another reason why your person has been at that crossroads because we're getting two queen of wands here okay so there's a few messages that are coming through for me for you in this situation so for some of you this is a divine masculine it it 
it could be a feminine as well like it could be either one but for many of you there is some sort of an issue here with a divine masculine who has you as a feminine in his life as well as another feminine in his life so there are two queens so one of you is this queen of wands one of you is this queen of swords I don't know which one, only you would know, right? Which one you are, but they are feeling like they need to make a decision. So I'm feeling that for some of you, this is um, a situation that you already, I mean, you already know this, right? Like your masculine or your feminine may be trying to get out of a particular situation that they're in with somebody else that is toxic or that is bad, but maybe because of what's been going on in the world with the quarantine and all that, they just haven't been able to physically do so. Um, so for some of you, this, this may not even be an active person. This may be an ex who is lingering around, like their energy may be lingering around or they themselves are still lingering around wanting your love's attention or wanting to distract your person, um, your beloved in some, some way or wanting to harass the two of you in some way. But I feel like there is a special message here for those of you who have some sort of a third party situation, whether physically they are there and stuck with them and can't get out, wanting to get out or in some process of trying to get out or they have left but this person is lingering so that is another reason that could be another reason why your person has always felt like you have always felt that your person like you can't can't get further than that wall right like you're always hitting up against that wall and part of it may be because of this third party situation because this card can also indicate a third party see block third party so that may be another reason why your person is stuck. Now, if you're not in a third party situation, then this is very much the energy of what we were talking about before, is that they very much want to take action towards you. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of excitement. Um, there's so much stirring within your person where they want to move forward. They don't want to hit that wall with you anymore, but they are struggling because they've always been in this queen of swords energy right they are the intellect they are they they their default system is always their own mind and they tend to kind of get stuck in that going around in circles in their mind and it's, sometimes it's very hard for them to come out of their mind and transition to taking action but I do feel very much that that is what is going to happen because we have this wheel of fortune now this is our good luck card here guys this is going to be fantastic for all of you because this is telling us as a final message from your beloved that this karmic cycle, whatever they have been going through here, whether it's a third party who is getting involved or lingering, or whether it's just your person and them kind of being stuck in their head, like them being their own worst enemy, this karmic phase is now shifting away. This wheel of fortune is an excellent and positive indication that your person wants you to know that they are working through these issues. They want to be with you. They don't want you to lose help, lose hope. They know that they have been repressing their true emotions. They know that they have, you know, been keeping you maybe at arm's length that they haven't fully opened up to you, but now they want to enter a new phase in this connection, a new cycle. Um, they want that new beginning. They want to get out of the negativity of and limitations of just being trapped in their mind and they truly do want to open up their heart and enjoy this new new phase they want to this wheel of fortune is going to be shifting everything for the two of you and you're going to come out of this stuck energy because of the power of this wheel and you are going to move forward and it's going to be together because they are definitely looking to take that ownership and they're definitely wanting to be in your presence wanting to be with you this is so beautiful. I love this. So please do leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of your reading. If you would like guidance on your specific and unique situation, then the link to have a private reading with me is in the box below, as well as the link to all of these Oracle decks that I've created, especially for all of you who are on this beautiful journey. So you know how much I love you. You know how much I believe in you. Thank you so much for being here with me today, and I'll see you all on the next reading. And last but not least, my beautiful ones, 
we are going to end with messages from your angel guides. What would they want to tell you right now? How do they want to guide you? What words do they have for you as you move forward? Here is your message from them. Ooh, ooh, so juicy, so wonderful. Look at this. Let your past go. The burden of caring your past around has made you weary. Dear one, it's time to set this burden down. Keep only the lessons and the love and leave everything else behind. You don't want it or need it and it's now gone. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, beautiful angel spirit guides. I feel like there has been a lot of issues, right? Coming through from the past for yourself and, and a lot coming through from your twin flame or soulmate in some of these readings today. So I I'm so glad that they are getting us more focused on how important it is for us to let go of those burdens from the past, those ghosts of the past that are haunt, that may be haunting us and keeping us from moving forward into full union, right? Full union or reunion with our twin flame or soulmate. So thank you again so much to all of you for being here. You have all my love and I'm so looking forward to seeing all of you on the next reading.